quadratic functions and models. So a quadratic function is in this form where you have f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c where a, b, and c are real numbers and a cannot equal zero. So basically you're always looking for that squared term. As long as your highest degree term is, is a two, then you've got a quadratic function. The graph of a quadratic function is called a parabola. And first we're going to look and see what that letter a does to the graph. So here I have a general f of x equals ax squared quadratic function and let's see what happens as a cycles from positive 5 back to negative 5. Whoa! Did you see that? Okay, so as long as a is negative, it's concave down, and when it's positive, it's concave up. See, here a is negative 1.6 and our parabola is opening down, and when we let a go up to a positive number, here it's 1.4, it's opening up. So a lets you know if it's opening up or opening down. Okay, now A also tells you how wide the parabola opens up. So watch. The higher A gets, the narrower the parabola is. And then when A is a number between 0 and 1, it gets really wide. So you see there's point 0.1 and look how wide that parabola is. Okay, let me drag this graph over here so you can see it better. And we'll zoom out a little bit. Okay, so big A, narrow parabola. And the smaller A gets, the wider the parabola is. The standard form of a quadratic function is f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k. So what do h and k do? Okay, so I'm going to fix a at 0 0.5 and watch what happens as I change h. When h is positive 4, this point right here moves over to positive 4. When h is negative 2, this point moves over to negative 2. So h moves our parabola horizontally. It doesn't change the shape, just moves it backwards, left and right, backwards and forwards. k moves it up and down. It does not change the shape, just moves the parabola up and down. So back to our standard form, one thing to remember is that it's always x minus h and this is always plus k. So that's going to help us find that little low point, that vertex. So now we're ready to talk about the parts of a parabola. This point right here is called the vertex and its coordinates are h comma k and you'll notice that the parabola has symmetry around this vertical line that goes right through the vertex and that line is called the axis of symmetry. And its equation is always going to be x equals h. So we're ready to do this problem now. For this function, this quadratic function, we're going to find the vertex and axis of symmetry. And to do that, we're going to use a process called completing the square. I'm going to factor out whatever the lead coefficient of x squared is. In this case it's a 2. And I'm going to leave a space and leave that constant plus 7 out there by itself. So here comes completing the square. I'm going to take half of that middle term, that 4, square it and add it inside. So half of 4 is 2, squared is 4. Now I've added 4 times 2, which is 8. So to keep it balanced, I have to subtract 8. And now we get this in factored form. And there's h and there's k. So our vertex is negative 2, negative 1. Why is it negative 2? Because if you look up here in the standard form, it's always x minus h, remember? So this is really x minus a negative 2, like that, okay? So the vertex is always the opposite of what it looks like in the equation for h. 
What about the axis of symmetry? Well, remember that that's always going to be x equals h. So x equals negative 2 is your axis of symmetry. OK, so how can I get the equation of a parabola if I know its vertex and one of the points it passes through? Let's just plug everything in, in that we know. We're going to have y equals a x minus h squared plus k. OK, I'm going to use this point for x and y. So 0 will equal a times 0 minus, there's h, 1 squared, and there's k, 2. So I get a plus 2 equals 0, so a equals negative 2. So here's our equation, y equals negative 2 x minus 1 squared plus 2. A shortcut to get h is to use this little formula right there. h equals negative b over 2a if your function is in this form, okay? So remember that if a is less than 0, the parabola is going like that, which makes your vertex a ma maximum. And if a is greater than 0, your parabola is going like that, which makes your vertex a minimum. Let's find the vertex of this function. h is going to be negative b over 2a, which will be positive 12 over twice negative 2, which is going to be negative 3. The y-coordinate k is what we get when we plug in negative 3 into our function. So it'll be negative 2 times 9 minus 12 times negative 3 minus 17. That's going to be negative 18 plus 36 minus 17, and that's negative 35 plus 36 is 1. So the vertex is at negative 3, 1. Now if you're wondering why do we even mess with all these quadratic functions and parabolas, that's because parabolas are everywhere. Every time you take a drink of water, you are looking at a parabola. There it is right there. Anything that's a projectile in the air takes the path of a parabola. So parabolas are really useful. You can have a lot of fun with them.